Not all wounds are visible, and members of the military and first responders likely know this best. Let's learn more about PTSD and the Wounded Warriors Run. Post-traumatic stress disorder, it really hits home for our first responders and for military um, for incidents that they've been involved in, right? So um, they may not experience the, the feelings immediately after an event, uh, but it can affect them and affect their families. I've worked on a, a lot of high profile uh, investigations uh, in terms of my involvement with, with crime scenes. Um, the most recent being the unfortunate incident that we had in Oak Bay. I've also been privy to the investigation where Sarah Beckett was killed out in West Shore. Um, numerous fatality collisions. Unfortunately, we have some, some drugs that are very potent on the road right now that are, are causing people to overdose. Uh, through just recreational use of the drug and it's something that's very frightening to us as, as a policing agency. Not only do we have to do a good job in the investigation, but we also have to do a good job making sure that we're looking after ourselves when we take care of the investigations of that nature. There's Greater Victoria Police Victim Services that I, I volunteered with and yeah, some of the things that we ended up uh, being a part of were, uh, were traumatic and were, uh, did have effect. Um, and then sort of all the way through, right? They've had, uh, everyone has a lot of events in their lives, uh, but there's, there's always a few that still have that, that, that hold on you. I myself am a survivor of post-traumatic stress, uh, anxiety and depression. Uh, I know what it is to live with that. I would never uh, suggest that I would say to any sufferer that I know how they feel. I can certainly empathize with them and their families and uh, what that is to have that third entity, uh, PTSD living in the family. If you bottle all the, all the nastiness that we see in law enforcement, if you bottle that up, it's going to eat you alive and it's unfortunately led to a number of suicides, not only uh, in, in the military circles, but also within the first responder circles. So if you don't deal with it, it's something that's, that's not going to go away. Two of my friends who are the co-founders of the Wounded Warrior Run BC, Alan Kobayashi and Dan Bodden. Uh, we're having a discussion about the rash of suicides that were happening back in 2014 and they decided to engage in a sporting activity that could perhaps raise some funds and awareness to uh, help our brothers and sisters in arms in the armed forces. Last year we lost 46 first responders to suicide and 10 military personnel. I definitely don't want to see any more go so if, if uh, we can rally behind our partners like the Sandwich Police Department, I think that we need to encourage people that it's okay to talk about this. How do you personally um, cope and deal with some of those stressful situations after the fact? Uh, debriefing, that's one of our biggest things here. Um, uh, the fire hall is excellent at uh, once there's been a, a, a traumatic or major incident, uh, we do all sit down immediately. Uh, we don't go home, we don't you know, stop and pass go, we immediately go in, we sit down as a group and, and talk about what we saw, uh, how things have affected us immediately, uh, and then we touch base with each other, we'll, we'll call. Uh, this organization is very good in that we have SISM support, which is basically a peer support program that we have, uh, where we can talk to folks that have been trained uh, to deal with uh, stressful situations and such. Uh, we also have uh, positions like mine within the forensic identification section are deemed high risk because of the scenes that we go to. So we, we have annual psychological checkups that we have to go to as well to make sure that we're adjusting well and that we have a professional uh, psychologist to, to talk to. You're not alone. We're in this together. We believe that all of us are in this together. And um, you know, there's so many ways to give and there's so many ways to help and there's, there's so many ways to reach out if anybody needs it. And, we want to make sure people understand there's a place to go, that um, there is a solution and we're here to share that. My biggest breakthrough is through group therapy. When I got to sit with others and uh, I was a little uncomfortable sitting with some RCMP members at the beginning of my group therapy, but we quickly realized that there is a, a bond, there is a union there. It doesn't matter which uniform you necessarily wear, but there are a lot of uh, commonalities that we had and in sharing we learned as much from each other as we did from the practitioners. 
we go to a lot of scenes uh, that, that are horrific. Uh, our members are, are human, just like uh, the military and within the uh, policing community and the fire community, ambulance as well. Uh, we have to find a way to, to deal with those images that we have in our heads after we attend these scenes. And uh, this is a great support network, not only for the military uh, folks, but, but also for all the first responders. Uh, there's a long list of resources that are available through Wounded Warriors that, that allow us to seek the support that we need when we are dealing with those difficult situations. I'm it's, impressed. Those are really heavy. The difference with Wounded Warriors Canada is that they really do cover all angles of treatments. And so they've spent quite a bit of time um, researching what is the best way to treat PTSD. One of them is called COPE. It's called uh, Couples Overcoming PTSD Every Day. There's another program called the Trauma Resiliency Program. And this one is offered to first responders, vet veterans, uh, serving military. And it's a group-based program that happens in two phases. So people can understand what the symptoms are of PTSD and then how to um, approach dealing with them. The third program is uh, Compassionate Service Dogs. There is help. You can do it. Um, don't give up. You know, speak out and, and ask for help. It's vital ask for help. If you don't need help yourself and somebody wants to open up and speak to you, try to listen and try to have non-judgmental input. It's a difficult thing to do, but it could actually save somebody's life. It's all of the people who stand up and keep us safe every single day, whether that be at home or abroad, who we need to look out for, and uh, Wounded Warriors Canada recognizes that. We need to be there for those people who are there for us every single day. The Wounded Warriors run of BC. It honors the fallen and it helps the living. We're in this together, and you can be too. For Community Producers, I'm Kathleen Burton.